Hi, this is David Odell with Odell Complete Concrete. Today we're going to be doing this patio. It's a townhouse, so the access is a little tricky. We can't come around from the front, so we're actually entering from a different street to get into this uh, backyard condo or townhouse. This is what it looks like before we start demoing. It had a couple little squares for uh, some trees or plants. Something was in there at one time or another, but it's gone now. So we're going to demo all this concrete. Uh, I worked in the front of this house about uh, eight months ago. And I did uh, some stamped concrete in the front. The back is going to be the exact same design as the front. You may remember if you watched some of my videos, you would have seen this uh, front yard project. You'll recognize what job it is by the color, the two colors I'm using on this one. If, if you've seen all the videos, you'll know which one this is by uh, the stamp design and the colors. We have some palm trees around the um, outside perimeter of this job in the planter bed area. And the roots are pretty much everywhere underneath this patio as we start to remove the concrete. There's a lot of them scattered around here. And what it uh, what it did to the soil with all those little fine uh, feeder roots is compact the soil really well. Just really densified it. The concrete came out relatively easy had no steel reinforcement in it no fiber mesh it's probably a basic 2000 psi max which i love removing because it's so easy Now over here where that water hose is, we have a sprinkler valve um, on the corner of the patio. It's kind of right in the middle of the um, glass slider in, in a plain view. If you open those curtains in the slider door, you'd see a valve sticking up. So we're going to move those valves over beyond the um, visibility of looking out of the slider doors. We'll move those over. Then also um, the pipe that fed those. Um, valves were actually on top of the concrete so we're gonna drop that entire mechanism down below the concrete also the uh, homeowner that lives here is uh, pretty handy he likes to do a lot of stuff himself so I dropped him a few sleeves in here in the ground I dropped him some uh, a gas line some conduit um, he's he's gonna run that up a new patio cover and put some overhead lighting in there and then he's also going to uh, encase that gas line with a little um, barbecue island that he's gonna build himself you'll see the gas line material pretty soon here it's all gonna be underneath the patio and well protected as well as the uh, conduit so we had to trim out quite a few uh, palm roots just to get them down below grade we've shortened the distance up on this patio it did extend real close to the palm trees but we actually the new patio is going to be set back an extra three or four feet from those palms. That'll give it some more space to uh, for the roots and for watering so they won't get underneath this new slab. We widened it, but we shortened it off of the house. 
and then we got rid of those two squares that were in the middle that just kind of killed the whole workable space there's the gas line that we'll be using it's a three-quarter inch it's seamless and there's no couplings in it so it's one one solid run which is nice because assuming it's made correctly uh, you should have no gas leaks from end to end here's some conduits we're gonna drop in here apparently on the inside of that wall there where I'm stubbing him up on the house he's got an outlet in there that he'll piggyback an outlet with a um, GFI on it and then just run it over here and then all this will be coming up underneath the barbecue island also the fireplace is right there so uh, I guess he's gonna tap I guess there's a gas line in that wall that he's gonna tap into so he can uh, bring gas out here So we're setting up the laser level right now to get an idea of uh, how much slope we've got away from the house. On the edges of this uh, new patio, we're going to kind of soften it up with... Um, some nice radiuses on the corners nice little tight radiuses rather than a, a square corner now in this back corner that's going to be my new high point and I'm going to drain everything out the gate into the backyard it's going to go into the planter and then it's going to drain towards the gate at the same time So my starting point is under the weep screen, a half inch below. That gives me two inches below floor level. Here's a pencil mark. I've established a grade there. Over on this particular stake, this is my outside form line. And there's another pencil mark. That's grade. Well, actually, those are level marks. I put those in level, and then I'm just going to measure down to get my slope. That's the nice thing about that laser level. You can go around your whole perimeter, mark level lines, and then uh, take a look at your grade, measure down from those level lines, get your slope, base it on the grade that you have, and uh, do it at whatever works best. There's your outside form line and there's elevation. Now we can start fine tuning fine tuning the grade. That concrete remove we uh, removed out of here, it really varied in depth. I think it was only about the max up near the house about two and a half inches thick. So we had to uh, move a lot of dirt around to get the uh, grade right so we could get four inches of concrete in here. What we'll be doing on the um, concrete design is I'm going to mix, uh, I believe, some Davis color. It's Omaha tan. We're going to put that into the mix. And then we're going to uh, hit it with some highlighters, antiquing release agent. I use the powder. Um, we're going to go with an autumn brown. But autumn browns vary a lot depending on who manufactures it. And I like uh, autumn brown from, what was it, brick form I believe. It has less red in it. 
in some of the other places so you get more of a brown. So I'm using some plastic, typically this particular material, material that I'm using to get the outside edge of my concrete is used in uh, landscaping for uh, to divide grass from your planting bed and you just bury it and leave it in there and that kind of separates the two things. And it's very flexible and durable. So it works great as a concrete form. You can reuse it multiple times. And you can bend as tight a radius as you want and it's still nice and rigid you could probably get away with a two foot radius on this real easy I actually went straight in the middle of this um, run here I followed the string line and then I just bent it around when I got within about uh, three feet of the corners and when you're dealing with these kind of radius it's all just a matter of preference you can make them however you want as long as they look good and you like them then that's what you go with That's why a lot of times it's easier to just do a straight line form job because you can't change that. It is, it's always, it's either straight or it isn't straight. But with, when you start you get into radius form work and um, meandering lines, uh, it's just a matter of preference. And so it could change a hundred times, you know, in the process. But when you're throwing some straight forms in, it, it is what it is and that's it. So now we're putting some 3 8 or also known as number 3 rebar on uh, two foot centers. Starting to set some screed pins in the middle here. The way I always set my screed pins is with a, a simple two and a half inch by three quarter inch by 18 inch wood stake with a 16 duplex nail driven through it. And then I just set the uh, board on top of that and then I can drag my rod on it. This is uh, approximately a seven, I think we went like seven yards on this patio. I actually ordered, I believe, five and a half yards, and I ended up about a half a yard short. But since it was integral color, I had to order back two yards, which was a, a costly mistake. Um, I should have uh, ordered more to begin with. Yeah, you never really want to run out on a color stamp job integral because uh, you could run into some color matching issues, cold joints, uh, things of that nature. Fortunately, where I ran out of concrete on this one, I was in the shade and I was at that little walkway at the entrance. So it worked out real good for a place to run out. So this is what the concrete color looks like 
when you have integral it's pretty dark at this point just like any concrete would be whether it had color in it or not it would be a lot darker than what it would be inevitably when it's completely cured out typically I found uh, you need about 45 days in good sunlight to uh, get your real color to show what it's going to look like So that's when uh, when you're using an antique release agent like we did on this one the release agent normally you want a darker shade of whatever color your base is so you have some nice contrast but when you rin rinse the job within a couple of days of your pour both colors look virtually the same there's no contrast so you always wonder uh, how do I know if I'm taking the right amount off or not and that's when um, you just have to go by with what you know. It's kind of like doing it blind. Here we are. Um, I've tied a string line on the end of these uh, extension poles. That way I can snap some lines across from these the corner of the fireplace I'm going to put some joints at those locations those are my first joints I'll put in because I know that it's going to crack there off those corners so I'll put those joints in first then what I'll do after I get those and I'll try to divide this thing up so it kind of looks good So we got a, two lines off the fireplace. We got one going the long ways right down the middle. Now we don't have a lot of room to run poles out in here. So I'll just push it out, add a pole, push it out, add a pole. And then as I pull it back, I'll just keep disconnecting them. That's the way you do these in tight areas. Someone else was running uh, a tool there and you can see he's kind of dug in at the end there. It's kind of a, a mess right now, but I'm going to fix it uh, pretty soon here. Now the planer joiner didn't quite knock down that uh, dig in at the end on that one side of the fireplace. So actually I'm going to get out there a little early. I'm going to hit it with some funny floats possibly try to knock it down. And then I'm going to go early on some boards along that house and butter that up. I guess it was about lunchtime right now because I was about the only one out here uh, finishing the concrete at this point. So here's the funny trowel. You can cover a lot of area quickly. So I've got all my joints in. Now I've got it troweled in with the funny trowel. All I've got to do now is go over this, clean up the joints by hand, trowel it, edge it, and it's ready for stamping. Now uh, it's, we're at the point where we're going to start stamping. As you can see, I'm throwing some dust on over, dust over there in the corner, and that's the autumn brown. I'll throw it out there as far as I can. As I work my way out, I'll carry the bucket with me on my mats and dash in front of me and just keep going around. 
typically it dries um, quickest along the house if, if you're in direct sunlight so that's where we'll stamp first That part we ran out of concrete is down there on that little walkway. A little, what, 8x3, eight 8x4. By by so I got to be careful not to throw the powder onto the wet concrete because you don't want to work that into the concrete because that color will never come out if you do that. And you'll have a big dark spot. It won't look pretty. So this secondary color you gotta once you start throwing that on there you don't want to touch the concrete now that object you see there hooked to the poles that's a, a roller that rolls the joints open after we stamp um, you can use a chisel also and lightly go through it but these rollers make it a lot easier because you can do it from the outside edge or you can get um, a long long distance without having to um, hit every foot individually with the chisel. So I like the roller in this case. So we've got that two by four kind of there to break so the dust won't blow over there onto the uh, clean up load which is a little wetter and it's in the shade so that's what it looks like after you stamp it all kind of looks the same and you really can't see the definition at this point because the powder itself kind of fills up the cracks and crevices and you don't see the contrast so you don't really see all the action going on at this point so again it's kind of guesswork whether or not you hit it all or how evenly you hit it but you don't know until you start rinsing the next day that's when you know when you're doing this stuff really kind of you need you need to uh, practice so here's what I start doing on the next day is I uh, sweep up as much of the powder as I can and that can be re reused by the way and I've, I have reused it as long as you don't get a lot of leaves and um, things blowing into it onto the concrete you can salvage that color antique color and reuse it again on another job but in this case we had a lot of leaves falling from the trees and it got mixed in so it was all trash so we swept up all the release now what I'm doing is uh, I'm using the pressure washer and that's gonna get enough of that antiquing release agent off to show my base color and it'll show a lot more as the concrete lightens by curing and the actual release agent stays the same color that's when you'll start to see the contrast Well, here's what it looks like because you can see it. there's not a lot of contrast at this point like I said before that the concrete is dark it's gonna lighten the base antique color is gonna stay the same so as this lightens you're gonna see more and more contrast so basically I rinse this kind of just by doing it many times taking the right amount off I won't know if it's the right amount or if it's even until I come back to seal it. So now we're coming back to seal and you can see it's lightened up a lot that base color so you can see more of the contrast at this point. And I'm putting on a lacquer base on here and I like to use that uh, diamond seal. It's from uh, Matte Crete. Um, it's pretty, it, it's thicker than a lot of the other ones I've noticed. And the thicker it is the better it is that's how I judge sealers by its thickness especially your lacquer bases
There's your gas line stuff. This is where the barbecue will be built over. So I got all the joints in there. This will actually lighten up even more than this. Not a whole lot, but it will lighten up some more than this within the next 20 days, I'd say. So you'll actually get even a little bit more contrast than what you're seeing right now. The nice thing about putting this lacquer based sealer on here is what you're doing is you're protecting the surface from staining, uh, damage, anything like that. So you can preserve this color without fading or ain't staining basically forever as long as you maintain that sealer. And what you have to do is reseal about every three to five years and it's pretty simple. You just pressure wash it make sure it's completely dry and then reseal after you get a few multiple coats on there you may want to wipe it down with some acetone just to get the top layer off and then and then reseal you do that about after after about every five times you seal you wipe it down with some acetone it strips a little bit of the surface off then you reseal I don't know if anybody uses steam it but uh, we got a little content on there as well so if you use steam it you, you might find us on there as well also like I said in my last video I've got some apparel like shirts hats a couple other little items on my storefront through my website thanks for watching my video and uh, if you like what you see subscribe because I'm posting about I don't know one or one a week I'm trying to do about one a week have a good day I'll talk to you later